Gene Sheridan is the CEO and co-founder of Navitas Semiconductor. Mr. Sheridan, welcome. Good to have you with us. Uh, the, the report is very, very favorable on the, uh, on the top line. Your revenues, um, I think, more than doubled compared with a comparable quarter a year ago. Uh, anyone would love to see that. But uh, obviously what people would love to see even more is profitability. When do you expect to see that? Yeah, Ron, uh, thanks for having me, Tyler. And uh, it's great to be on this show. We're on a great track towards profitability. We're in a steep growth curve right now, having completed a few quarters, each quarter doubling from the prior year, 35% up sequentially from the prior quarter. Uh, and we predict put off profitability in the next 18 months or so. Uh, we're in a great position to deliver on exactly that. Uh, these chips are powering virtually all modern electronics with clean energy, energy saving technology. What is what is the impediment from from where you are today and and reaching uh, profitability in say 18 months? What's holding you back? Is it is it that your costs are high or that the margins aren't where they need to be? What is it? As you die, Actually, as you no, sit there as the CEO and you go, how, how am I going to get there? What's holding me back? It's really early days, early innings on capitalizing on this huge opportunity to displace silicon, which is a $22 billion market today, powering all modern electronics, powering your car, your EVs, powering mm -hmm. data centers, powering home appliances, powering virtually all forms of electronics. They are being displaced by next generation technology that we make called gallium nitride and silicon carbide. As we ramp our revenues, our costs are right in line, our expenses are right where we want them to be to not only deliver profitability in the next 18 months, deliver market leadership and bring that back to a US-based semiconductor company, which we're especially proud of. So we feel very good about our position and we're in that high growth, high investment period to deliver on it. Gene, I'm curious about your business in China. It says that your mobile growth has continued there, but so many other companies, both in your sector as, as well as others, are struggling with China's recovery that's been a little more choppier than, than hoped, I should say. What are, what are you seeing in China, and how are you making sure that market continues to work for you? Yeah, our technology, as I refer to, it's, it's got the benefit of both worlds. It's both a enabling new technology in the new energy markets, like electric vehicle, energy storage, uh, powering next generation solar inverters, but it's also displacement technology. So we're going into existing markets, like charging your phone or your laptop, and instead of using silicon, we're using gallium nitride to fast charge that laptop or phone up to three times faster with half the size and weight. As we do that, the market could be flat or even declining, and we can still deliver significant growth as we're converting those existing silicon designs over to this new generation technology. Boy, people will love that faster charging <laughs> EVs and phones and so forth. Christina, you're you're still here, aren't you? Christina Parsonevolis. Yeah, Go yeah ahead. and I want to uh, piggyback just off of what Courtney asked in regards to China. You, uh, Your front-end manufacturing is 100% outsourced to Taiwan Semiconductor. Taiwan Semiconductor has 10 plants in Taiwan, two in China. So are you concerned at all about just how much or how reliant you and like other companies like NVIDIA are reliant on one name? It is true that TSMC is the largest supplier to the whole semiconductor industry, and they're based largely in Taiwan, as you point out. But our silicon carbide chips are actually 100% manufactured in the U.S. We now have multiple options coming to us of factories that were originally built to make silicon in Europe, in the U.S., and around Asia that now want to upgrade those factories to make gallium nitride and silicon carbide. So we have many options intended to, to diversify into all of these different regions to serve the U.S. needs and the global needs uh, outside of Taiwan, outside of China. So we've got a very nice diversification strategy that's that's coming to right. us. But that, that diversification strategy is a little bit ways out because you did say you're still at the early stages and building a silicon carbide plant here in the U.S. is obviously not cheap. I was just at Wolf Speed last week, and, of course, we know what's going on with On Semi. So I feel like uh, is this something that maybe is really not in the near term or at least not in the next few years for you? No, it's actually surprisingly quick. That's the benefit of this technology is we can retrofit older existing fabs. If I had to build a brand-new semiconductor fab, it could take three, four, or five years. You're absolutely right. In our case, we can actually retrofit older silicon factories, make them gallium nitride and silicon carbide capable in about 12 to 18 months. And some of those efforts are already underway. So it'll be a lot faster than you might expect. All right, Gene, thank you very much and uh, continue good fortune to you and your company. We appreciate your time today. Thanks so much, Tyler. And Thanks. Christina, thank you as well.